Good morning, scuba fans, Makata makers, and uh, Arduino freaks. So, what are we doing today? Well, I got a pressure sensor that I wanted to put in, and also I had a lot of broken wires from opening this case up too much. So, um, I decided to do some refactoring, as we say in software development, but uh, this was refactoring of the soldering. And then I was doing it all and I got to the end and I just thought, I just have the urge to make a video about this and tell people, you guys, about the tips and tricks which I think uh, will help you um, get this done a lot quicker than I have. So um, so where are we going to start? So first of all, just know that I've gone so many times, two steps forward, one step back. The thing to do is just be patient, give yourself time and know that in the end you're going to get there. Because soldering isn't difficult. It's just... It's just kind of like an art, a science, and then the psychology. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, the art, the science, and the psychology of soldering Mercator Origins, a project that has to fit inside of a GoPro case. So first of all, let's just have a little look at what we've got here. So I've just put this sensor in, which um, was a little bit hairy because this was a 90 quid sensor. Now that is the most expensive sensor by far. In fact, it's the most expensive item anywhere in the Mercator Origins build. Um, cheaper, you know, it's more expensive than the cable, which costs 66 pounds for 11 meters. So um, what we're looking at here is basically I've hacked the cable. We're gonna talk about why I did it and what I did. And also, if you see the other pictures which I've and videos which I'm gonna be putting up, this is a much better wiring harness I had before. So let's get cracking. First of all, hack your cables. If you want to have decent soldering, if you want to have resilient wiring harnesses inside your GoPro, which stays together, doesn't break, and um, wires which are friendly to opening and closing the case, this is what you've got to do. You've got to basically not be afraid of cutting your cable wires. You get your connectors, everything should have connectors so it's nice and modular. If you have a breakage, it's going to be so much easier to fix it, no stress. So first of all, connectors for everything. These little guys are beauties. Um, this is called a Stemma QT connector. Adafruit, with all their sensors, um, usually put these on. And um, basically it's a way of daisy chaining a I2C sensors together without having to use soldering to the sensor. And of course that's good, you don't have to get any heat or solder on the sensor. So um, this chap, he came from uh, Buccaneer Electronics, Buccaneer Marine Electronics, in a wonderfully named town, which I never knew existed, called Macduff in Scotland, which is uh, substantially north of Aberdeen in oil country. Um, north Sea oil rigs are um, up that way. And the sort of thing they sell is the sort of thing you'd expect to be going on in that industry. UAVs, ROVs, and uh, all the blue robotics stuff I can get there. And um, anyone in the UK, I recommend them. There's also a place down in Portsmouth, because um, this isn't about an advertising channel. We're not taking any um, sponsorship at the moment, and we're certainly not taking any affiliate links. So um, this is a 300 meter pressure sensor for water. I was amazed when I saw what that spec was. I mean, I'm going to be deep in, do only so deep as 40 meters, and actually only have really dived to 30 meters regularly. Not only that, but this only, okay, only, it costs about 90 pounds, but if you consider how much this sort of thing would have cost a few years ago, and it's open source technology, so there's the entire spec online. If you know someone with a company who can make this stuff, then you can manufacture it yourself, down to the schematic, the um, mechanics, everything. So um, let's quickly get on with what I've done. Um, hack your cables. What does that mean? So I'm going to get this cable over here. This is what a sensor cable normally looks like. You've got a plug, you've got a line, uh, you've got a bunch of wires, and they're pretty rigid. Look at that, right? They want to go in the place where they're currently bent. And if I bend it, there you go, changes the shape. The problem is, if I crush it, it wants to push back. You can't really tell with four wires, but once you get 20, it becomes a nightmare trying to shut them in this case. So what do we do? We use silicon wire. So silicon wire has got a silicon sheath on the outside instead of PVC, and it makes it extremely flexible. This is wonderful stuff. It is a game changer for me developing this, um, this sat nav. If I'd known about it on day one, I could have probably taken a third of the time off of actually the whole build. 
So, um, what is good about it? It's resilient, it's very strong, just like most things made of silicon. It's got a very resilient um, sort of strain and stress profile. So I can manipulate it and it's not gonna break the wires inside. Although the, um, the actual copper inside there is really quite thin, it's no thinner than what's in, um, say this cable, well not cable, wire. Now that is a lot thinner sheath on the outside and it's made of PVC. But because we've got a thinner sheath on there, it's going to be a lot less resilient. And also, it doesn't like it doesn't like um, you know folding around. You know, it takes too much um, bending to actually get it to change the position. Whereas this one, look at them. I mean, look at these. They just love just flapping around and you know being easy to manipulate. There's no way that I could do that with normal wires, right? So let's make this tidy again. Uh, let's just look at what I've had to do with this sensor. Now this video is one of the first I've done, not only with music, which incidentally is Dexter Britton. He's a, um, he's a UK musician. And this is the Creative Commons Best Of album. All the music is royalty free. So that means our fellow makers and YouTubers, you can use this music on your YouTube videos. Um, do check the license conditions. Um, I need to go and do that after this. But um, as far as I know, everything is royalty free and we're allowed to use it for these purposes and non-commercial activity. So enough of that, let's get on. First of all, hack your cables. Let's get these out of the way. Right, hack your cables. Use silicon. Cut out the pieces of wire which are not silicon. So, yep, you're increasing the amount of soldering you have to do. So I had to do those soldering points and I had to do these points down here. You will thank me for it. Next, heat shrink. So I've used heat shrink for many, many years on my projects. What I haven't used is dual wall heat shrink. What is that? That is heat shrink that's got glue on the inside. And the important thing about that is I've had so many broken wires from regular heat shrink because these are really thin, um, fragile wires. The, um, if I take the examples which I was talking about earlier, here's one I broke earlier. Um, you can see, if we look at the brown wire, let's get focus. Okay, I'm a noob at this. Trust me that that is thin. And the problem is if I put normal heat shrink on there, um, what you're doing is you're preserving the electrical resistance. You're making it not, it's not going to short against anything. But what you're not doing is giving any strength to the joint where the solder um, meets the copper wire that's poking out the end of this. So for example, if I show you the black wire here, because it's a bit more clear, you can see that you've got the plastic sheath of the wire. Then you've got the, the solder, which is on the um, on the copper itself. And what you can't see, because I don't have a big, a great enough uh, camera here, is where the solder finishes and the plastic starts, inevitably you get a tiny bit of copper wire exposed, and that is where your break's always going to happen. So assuming you get your soldering sorted out, and you can do that like a Zen master, if you do not do anything about that little um, piece of copper that's exposed between the copper, sorry, between the uh, solder and the sheath of the wire, you're going to be playing around with uh, resoldering and refactoring your soldering on and on and on until you get so annoyed you're just going to go and do it as I'm telling you right now <laughs> and start again, which is almost what I've done. So number one, hack your cables. Number two, use dual wall heat shrink. Um, number three, give yourself three times more time than you think it's going to take to do the job. Seriously. Check and check again. Your colour coding is the next one. Um, in fact, let's go back to the last one. So the three times more about um, three more times more time than you think you need. That means do not do it an hour before dinner. Make sure you go to the bathroom beforehand. Make sure you've got some tissues to hand because the fumes from the soldering iron might make you a bit sniffly. Make sure you've got water, coffee or whatever you like to have a drink um, because you're going to be here for a while. Turn off notifications on your computer and certainly turn off notifications on your phone. You do not want to be distracted. Send the kids out, close your door, tell them, tell everyone that you're just going to have your, you're going to zone in and do some Zen meditation. What you're actually going to do is some Zen soldering. So do that and it's going to really help your psychology doing this. You know, it's going to help not getting frustrated and it's going to help just easing into something which can be frustrating at times. But you know what? 
it's it's not rocket science. It's easy to do at the end of the day. It's easy for a teenager to pick this up if you give it time. So number four was, um, well, number three slash four, give yourself more time than you think um, and you'll become a Zen solder master. Next, my chill out music has stopped. So let's just start that again. Come on, Mac. Right. Let's get that back going. So this is a little bit annoying. My Bluetooth keyboard doesn't connect that quickly. And that's because I've told the computer not to use Bluetooth as a way to wake up from sleep. Anyway, uh, let's start again. Let's go to time to, let's go to time to run. That's a nice one. Right. Okay. Music. So that's number five, chill out music. Have it on repeat. Whatever you like to listen to, to chill out, or meditation, or just when you're relaxing at the end of the day, put it on, put it on repeat so you don't have to touch it, because it will help. It helps me, and um, I think it's a really valuable thing to do. Sometimes I'll do it in silence. Whoops. Sometimes I'll do this in silence, but you know what? It's more fun this way. Next, six, tools. Now they say a bad workman blames his tools. I disagree. I say a bad workman doesn't replace his rubbish tools when he finds out that there's a better one available. Frank, quite frankly, I will complain about my tools no end if I find that one of them's gone bad or I've bought something in the past which is cheapo and uh, doesn't do the job which I want. Now the thing is I can complain as much as I like but if I don't change it then I'm just, you know, that's, that's just a bad thing. So let's get real. When you're doing these wires, they are very, very thin. So even if you've got wire cutters and you've got wire strippers at home already, it's quite possible that you don't have to get some new ones. So DCC sells these. DCC produce a whole range of um, stuff which has been useful for me. They sell stuff for radio, for um, model railways, digital control for model railways. These wire strippers, DCC concepts, were specifically designed to overcome the limitations on other wire strippers. I'll have another YouTube video about tools later. Um, next one, wire, wire cutters. I've abused my wire cutters in the past, cutting um, steel wire and stuff like that. Keep these just for these wires. Do not cut anything else with it apart from maybe heat shrink. So that's tools. Next, solder accessories. This guy looks awful at the moment. That's tinning compound. Every time your soldering iron seems to stop working, use this to clean the to clean the tip. Next, what's next? Solder. Okay, solder, pretty obvious. Some people might use a narrower gauge than that, but you know, it's quite basic. Make sure it's tin only. Don't use lead, especially for our American friends who can still buy lead solder. Lead is a bit nasty, and if you do use lead solder, make sure you wash your hands immediately afterwards you don't eat anything because you do not want to have any particles of lead in you um, we'll talk about that another time too so uh, what else what you need is a temperature controlled soldering iron don't mess around with a gas iron like I have before don't mess around with something which isn't temperature controlled you need to run your your soldering iron station I understand from finding out from somewhere can't remember Run your soldering iron at 100 degrees above the melting point of the solder that you're using. So I've been informed and I need to check that tin melts at about 250 degrees when it's just on its own, no lead. Um, so I've got it at 360 degrees and I've got to say that it hasn't, broke, it hasn't worn my tip out through oxidation. It does work nicely with the solder and so I've kept a 360. Maybe it's not recommended, maybe it's um, not quite the right thing, but I'm good with it. So that's what I recommend, 360 degrees centigrade. Then the tip, okay, at the moment it's looking a bit ropey. Make sure you've got a nice damp sponge, which needs cleaning there. And then when you've wiped it, go and put it in here, in this tinning compound. That helps to get rid of some of the oxidation as well. Put it back over onto the sponge and you're ready to go. So. Get your solder stuff sorted out. And then finally, have a nice mat underneath your workspace. You wanna have a mat which you do not care about getting messy, getting burnt, dropping solder, 
basically just, it's sacrificial, right? It's nice because I've found that taking photos, this is a one centimeter grid and you get a nice idea for scale for, for these things which are really, really small. So um, number eight, that's a mat. And number nine, the end, be patient with yourself. Just be kind to yourself. This is gonna take you time. And honestly, at the beginning, if you're gonna make one of these, commit it. Just commit to yourself that you're gonna do it because I know you can get to the end. I know that you'll be able to do this successfully. It's just that if you don't commit at the beginning and put yourself in full heartedly, you might find that you stop halfway through. And that's gonna be a shame because I'd love as many people as possible to be able to enjoy not only using this Mercator Origins, but also building them and encouraging kids to build them. So be kind to yourself. That means take breaks, eat, sleep, and you can always start again. So um, good luck and have great soldiering.